today we're going to learn about a way of finding limits that is a lot easier than the way that we learned at the beginning of the year. This method is called L'Hopital's Rule. This is how you spell it. It looks like L apostrophe hospital with the S left out of it. The way you pronounce it is long O, low P, long P, E, L'Hopital's Rule. It's named after a French mathematician. This was his last name, and this was a very important rule that they came up with in making this much easier. It is a method for finding limits that initially equaled 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. When we started limits at the beginning of the year, this was one of the hardest things that we had to do, was to find a limit whenever we ended up with 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. 0 over 0, I told you back then that the in a limits term, 0 over 0 meant keep going. But now we're going to look at a new way to do this that is very different. Here is L'Hopital's rule simply put. And it says if the limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x equals 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, then the limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x is also equal to the limit as x approaches a of f prime of x over g prime of x. What L'Hopital discovered was that if you're taking a limit and you end up substituting it first and getting 0 over 0, if you just take the derivative of the top and the bottom of the fraction, then try substituting, you will get the same answer as the correct limit. This is a very unusual thing and how it works, but it does. So what we're going to do is we're going to review the old way to do limits, and now I'm going to show you with L'Hopital's rule the new way to do limits. Let's take, for example, the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared minus 2x minus 3 over x minus 3. Okay. x squared minus 2x minus 3 over x minus 3. When we did limits at the beginning of the school year, what I would have you do is take the 3 and substitute it into the top and the bottom. And if you do, you will see that you get 9 minus 6 is 3, minus 3 is 0 over 0. And 0 over 0 means keep going. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to, what did we do to keep going at this point? We would factor this. So let's factor the numerator, x and x. And this one factors into minus 3 plus 1. And the denominator cannot factor, so we just leave it as x minus 3 then I think you would see that now we would mark out the x minus 3's and we now have the limit as x approaches 3 of x plus 1. Now you can direct substitute in and you get 3 plus 1 which is 4. Now that wasn't too hard. That was one of the simpler limits that we did way back. But now let me show you how this same problem works with L'Hopital's rule. Let's take the initial problem x approaches 3 x squared minus 2x minus 3 over x minus 3. Let me caution you, however, as you do this problem, if you do not check and make sure that you are truly dealing with a 0 over 0 scenario, you can do L'Hopital's, but you will get the wrong answer. It has to be 0 over 0 to begin with, so we substitute it in. We did it a minute ago, and you will see that this is 0 over 0. So now, 0 over 0 means instead of keep going, it means use L'Hopital's rule. So what we're going to do is we bring down the limit. We take the derivative of the top, which in this case, 2x minus 2, over the derivative of the bottom, 
which is 1. And now we substitute in the 3. 2 times 3 is 6 minus 2. And lo and behold, we got the same answer that we did over there. Now, the one thing I'm very con getting confused is trying to do quotient rule to this. This is not quotient rule. This is a limit. The only time you do quotient rule is if, is if I ask you to find the derivative. I am now asked to take a limit. When you do a limit, you do L'Hopital's, which is a separate limit of the, excuse me, a separate derivative of the numerator, a separate derivative of the denominator. So please do not get those two things confused. Okay, next example. The limit as x approaches 4 of 2x minus 8 over the square root of x squared plus 9 minus 5. Take a look at how I wrote that down. I'm going to scoop the paper up a little bit so you can see. The limit as x approaches 4 of 2x minus 8 over the square root of x squared plus 9 and then outside of the square root minus 5. Okay, I'm not going to go through and work this out the old way, but I do want to talk about it for a minute. If you think back to the beginning of the year, what we used to do here, first of all, you plug in and you see, yes, the top is 0. In the bottom, this would be 16 plus 9 is 25. The square root of 25 is 5 minus 5. Yes, this is 0 over 0. And at the beginning of the year when we did limits, we would multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate where we would take the square root of x squared plus 9 plus 5 over the square root of x squared plus 9 plus 5. And then we clean it up, and it got really ugly and really gross. So now with L'Hopital's, we can do this in a much simpler way. This does equal 0 over 0, so we can use L'Hopital's on this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, I'm going to skip it so I have a little more room and it doesn't get all confusing, the derivative of the top, which is 2. The derivative of the bottom, you've got to be careful doing this because you need to remember that this is chain rule right here. It is this to the power of 1 half. So it's going to be 1 half, parentheses to the negative 1 half, and in the parentheses goes x squared plus 9. Then you've got to take the derivative of the x squared plus 9, which will be 2x. The derivative of the 5 is 0, so we don't worry about that. Okay, now you must clean this up. Do not try to cancel the 1 half with the 2 top to bottom. You can't do that. You can, however, cancel this 1 half and this 2 right here. So those two cross out. So I have a 2 on the top, an x on the bottom, but because this has a negative exponent and it's already sitting on the bottom, to make it a positive exponent, we move it to the top of the fraction and write the square root of x squared plus 9 like so. Remember that if something had a negative exponent and was on top, we moved it to the bottom. If it's already on the bottom and it's negative, we move it to the top. So now try to substitute in 4. So you're going to get 2 square roots of 16 plus 9 is 25 over 4. Square root of 25 is 5, and so we have 10 over 4, which reduces to 5 halves. And there is your limit. Now you may be asking yourself, why didn't you teach us this at the beginning of the school year? Well, that's because we didn't know derivatives back then, so we had to wait until now to go back and show you the quick way to do derivatives. Okay. I have a couple more examples I want to show you, but I need to move on to a new sheet of paper. So I'm going to put an arrow right there, and I'm going to move this on. Ask the teacher to pause it if you're not quite done writing. And on we go. These are a little bit longer. Let's get into the stuff we consider to be yucky, like trig. So we have limit as x approaches 0 of sine squared x over x squared. So, if we substitute in 0, the sine of 0 is 0, squared is still 0 over 0. So this is 0 over 0. But, because the squared is embedded, the first thing I need to do is to rewrite this as sine of x, the quantity squared, over x squared. So that when I take the derivative, I take it properly. Okay? So, 
Next step, copy the limit down. You've got to copy that limit down every time. We're going to take the derivative of the numerator. Once again, this is chain rule. The outer is the square, the inner is the sign. So we're going to do the derivative of the square, which is two parentheses to the first. What goes in the parentheses? The sine of x. Then we've got to multiply by the derivative of that, which is cosine of x. And then take the derivative of the denominator, which is 2x. Okay? Now, can I clean this up at all? Yes, I can. I can cancel the 2s. So I now have the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x times the cosine of x over x. Okay, now substitute the zero in. So we're going to have the sine of zero, which is zero, times the cosine of zero, which is one over zero. Now wait a minute. It is still zero over zero. When that happens, if you get zero over zero for the, after you've taken the derivative, you can use L'Hopital's again. You can use it multiple times before you finally get an answer. So let's write our problem down as to where we were. We had sine of x times cosine of x over x. Okay, now we're going to take the limit again, but we're going to do L'Hopital's to this. Now do you see ahead of time that when I do the derivative of the bottom, it's going to be a 1 this time. So that means that I will be done after this time through. What rule do I need to use with the top of this? I have two functions multiplied together, so I will have to use the product rule. So we copy 1, sine of x, times d2. The derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. Plus, some of you are starting to write minus there, 2 cosine of x times d1, which is cosine of x again, over the derivative of the numerator, excuse me, the denominator, which is 1. Okay, so we did 1 d2 plus 2 d1 all over 1. So let's clean this up a little bit. Limit as x approaches 0 of negative sine squared x plus cosine squared x over 1. Now we're going to substitute in the values. So it's going to be negative sine squared 0 plus cosine squared 0 over 1. Remember that this means the sine of 0, just square it. Now the sine of 0, if you don't remember your unit circle, here is 0. Coordinates are 1 comma 0. The sine is the y. So the sine of 0 is 0, so it's going to be 0, plus the cosine at 0, that's the x coordinate, 1 squared over 1. Clean that up, and your final answer is 1 over 1, which is 4. All right. Now, a couple of things you need to remember before I do the last two examples. Okay. When you have 0 over a number besides 0, 0 over 3, 0 over 5, 0 over 2, 0 over half, that equals, think for a minute, that equals 0. When you have a number over 0, when you're dealing with limits, this is with limits, when you have a number over 0, Remember that the zero really isn't zero, it's something close to zero. A number over point zero 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 one is getting very close to infinity. Okay, think about that one for a minute. A couple more that you need to know. You need to know that whenever you have infinity over a number, that's one we really haven't talked about a whole lot. If you have and if, when you plug in, if you get an infinity over a straight number, infinity over 3, infinity over 5, what's infinity over 3? What's a third of infinity? That's just infinity. 
okay? But now here's the weird one. What if you have a number and then over infinity? Remember that means two, for example, over something really huge, two over a million, two over a billion. That is getting very close to zero. So box those in. They're going to come in handy. We haven't done a problem yet with infinity over infinity. We're going to do that right now. And let me show you how these work. For example, the limit as x approaches infinity of 4x squared minus 3x over 6x cubed plus 5x squared. The limit as x approaches infinity of 4x squared minus 3x over 6x cubed plus 5x squared. Okay, now, when we had a limit as x approaches infinity in the past, think for a minute. Do you remember how we used to do these problems? What we used to do in this class, some of you moved in before um, when you did this in Mr. Giglio's class, but the way we did it in here, we divided everything by the highest power of x. And that got kind of tedious after a while. But L'Hopital's now makes this much, much easier. So if you plug in an infinity, we have an infinity squared, which is even bigger, times 4, which is even bigger, minus 3 times infinity. That's still huge over something huge right there. This is infinity over infinity. So we're going to use L'Hopital's rule. Limit as x approaches infinity, take the derivative of the top. That would be 8x minus 3 over... 18x squared plus 10x. Okay? Now, as long as you have x's, either top or bottom, it's still going to be infinity over infinity. I don't care if you still have a 3 sitting there. It's still going to be infinity over infinity. You have to do L'Hopital's on these over and over again until either the numerator or the denominator comes out to be a constant. That's when you stop. Okay? So this one's not done. I still have x's left, so we're going to do it again. The limit as x approaches infinity, the numerator, 8. We got there. The denominator will be 36x plus 10. Now, what are we here? We are looking at, if you substitute infinity into the denominator, we're looking at 8 over infinity. Eight, 36 times something ridiculously huge, adding 10 is still ridiculously huge. So 8 divided by infinity. Which one of these four does that fit? That fits this one. A number over an infinity. That limit will be 0. Because it's 8 over something ridiculously huge, 8 over a billion, 8 over a trillion, that's really, really small. That's why it's approaching 0. Okay? Last example. The limit as x approaches 5 of x minus 5 over x squared plus 25. This is a, be care. actually I have two examples left. This one's a, whoops, be careful. This is a, you better plug in the 5 before you start doing the math because if you don't and you do L'Hopital's, you're going to get the wrong answer. Watch what happens. If you substitute 5 into the numerator, you're going to get 0. If you substitute 5 into the denominator, are you going to get 0? No. You're going to get 50. And 0 over a number up here? That's 0. I didn't even touch L'Hopital's rule. I got an answer because I started out initially doing direct substitution. 0 over a number is 0. That's done. Now, but look at this. Let me change the problem just slightly. I'm going to do x minus 5 over x squared minus 25. Now, if you look at that one, if you plug in 5 to the numerator, you're going to get 0 over 25 minus 25 is 0. So now you know that that is a candidate for L'Hopital's rule. So we're going to take it a step farther. This is the limit. As x approaches 5, take the derivative of the top, 1. Take the derivative of the bottom, 2x, 
Now plug in 5. So you're going to get 1 over 10. That is the limit. This information should be enough for you to complete the L'Hopital's worksheet that I am leaving with the substitute. If you have questions, I will be back on Monday. I will be here Monday morning. I will not, however, be available Monday after school because I have a meeting. So if you have questions on this worksheet, you can either catch up with me on Facebook on the calculus page or I will see you Monday morning and I can help you with this because this worksheet will be due as part of your packet on Tuesday you will turn in this one, the second derivative test worksheet, and the worksheet on concavity. Make sure you know which specific problems you need to do for each.